If you're an absolute beginner or you're just looking to deepen your understanding of photorealism, I've put together five key steps for achieving photorealism in Blender. This is primarily for architectural visualization, but you can apply these methods to any form of 3D art where you're wanting realism. Step one is accurate modeling and scale. Precise architectural modeling is the foundation of any photorealistic render. In Blender, it's crucial to pay attention to every detail, from the overall structure down to the smallest elements. This level of accuracy will ensure that your final render will look believable and true to life. Use real world measurements when creating your architectural elements and take advantage of Blender's built in unit system to work in meters or feet. This approach will help you create a model that accurately represents the building or space. You want to pay attention to any model that an architect gives you or you export out of a CAD package if you're the designer. I like to put a simple cube in the scene after importing the mesh to check that the scale is looking correct. You can tell pretty quickly when a 2 meter cube is the size of the Burj Khalifa, trust me. Pay close attention to elements like wall thickness, window details, door handles and even subtle surface imperfections. These small details can contribute significantly to the look of your overall render and can make the difference between a good and a great visualization. To streamline your modeling workflow, consider using modifiers such as array and mirror to model repetitive elements efficiently. Step two is using physically based rendering, PBR for short, materials, which is essential to achieving photorealism in Blender. These materials simulate how light interacts with surfaces in the real world, providing a more accurate representation of different materials like wood, metal, glass, and concrete. Understanding the principles of PBR will greatly increase the quality of your materials. High quality textures are essential for creating convincing materials. If you're an absolute beginner, you can get started by grabbing some free materials off Polyhaven or if you're up to it, you could even make your own by taking photos of a real world surface and reproducing that in Blender. When sourcing or creating textures, you really wanna pay attention to resolution, I like to go 4K, texture tiling, and any kind of variety within the texture because that will create repetition and break the illusion of realism. Adjusting material properties though is where the magic really happens. Experiment with parameters like roughness, metallic and specular to achieve the desired look for each surface. For instance, a polished marble floor will have different properties compared to a weathered wooden beam. Pro tip, you can also add subtle surface imperfections like scratching and dirt to really create that next level of realism. And you can also do this procedurally. There's a lot of great tutorials out there on that. But if you want to create a very basic material setup, you just need a albedo or base color, a roughness and maybe a normal map. You can plug these in and then make sure that the normal map is set to non-color and the roughness is set to non-color. So essentially any kind of texture you add in except for the base color or the albedo will be set to non-color. That's really, really important. Step three is to utilize HDRI, which is high dynamic range imaging, which is a game changer for global illumination within architectural visualization. That's a hell of a tongue twister. It provides realistic 360 degree environmental lighting that can dramatically improve the overall look of your scene. You can download HDRIs for free on Polyhaven and use them easily by going to your world shader, dragging your HDRI in and connecting it to the color input of the background node. It's really, really important that you select the right HDRI because each one will have a different time of day slightly different colors and just create a different mood. You want to test a whole bunch of different HDRIs and pick a few that you want to use over time. It's really easy to rotate the HDRI to change the position of the sun by enabling the Node Wrangler by going up to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and typing in Node Wrangler, clicking on the checkbox and then you can go down to the Environment Shader, click on the HDRI 
and press Ctrl T. After that, drag the Z rotation of your mapping node to rotate the sky. You will need to go to the viewport shading or cycles if you've enabled it to see the change. If you're going to be doing a night shot, fine tuning artificial light intensity and temperature is the final step for realistic lighting. If you're using a emission shader, you can create an additional black body node that plugs into the color node of the emission shader and try sticking to 2700K to 3200K for a nice warm cozy vibe. You can do this with normal lights as well in the settings. Understanding color theory in lighting and how it can be used to create harmony or contrast is something that will really be helpful, but don't worry if you're new to this because your understanding will grow deeper and deeper every project that you do. Just pay attention to reference projects and try to reproduce how they do it. And remember, not everything has to be done within Blender. I personally use Photoshop to edit my colors and you can do this as well. Or you could try DaVinci Resolve. You just don't have to do everything within Blender. Step four is to replicate real world camera settings within your render. You can create a camera with Shift A, move it around with G and the mouse button. To see what the camera is seeing, you can press zero on the number pad and control shift zero to change the view to a new position. Choosing the right focal length is essential for architectural visualization. Focal length can drastically change the composition and feeling of your render. Focal lengths such as 18 to 24 millimeters are really good for interior shots and for exterior shots, 35 to 50 millimeters is really good as well. These are real world measurements that are actually used within architectural photography and you can tweak this in the camera settings. Composition techniques play a vital role in creating a compelling architectural visualization. The rule of thirds, leading lines and framing are all great ways to compose your image. Blender's composition guides can help to plan your render when looking through your camera. Composition is a massive topic and it does deserve its own video, but if you don't have much experience, you can start by copying photos to plan your composition. Depth of field is another camera technique that is really vital to creating depth within your render. You can change your depth of field in the camera aperture settings under f-stop. If you want to do a lot of blur, try going down to 1.2, but if you want a nice sharp image with not too much depth, try to go up to 5.6. Those are both real world photography measurements. Blender's Compositor is a powerful tool for doing post-production on your render. I personally don't like to use the standard denoises. I like to actually enable denoising data in the layer settings and then using the Compositor's noisy image node and then plugging that in. I just find it gives a better outcome. In addition to denoising your image, basic color correction is really vital to creating a photorealistic result. You can achieve this with nodes such as color balance, hue saturation, and RGB curves to adjust the overall color and tone of your render. You wanna make sure that the colors work for the image, so you might wanna shift your vegetation to one green color versus all sorts of different greens. And you might also wanna to tone down your sky or shift the hue slightly. These slight tweaks can make the difference between a beautiful render and one that's hard to look at. You can also add some extra effects like lens distortion, glare or vignette to create a stronger composition and you might even want to introduce film grain into the render on certain cases. I almost always do this as it gives a real world camera look to it. You don't want to go over the top with these effects because it can look over processed really quickly. So make sure to refer to the original render. It's really important to develop your own style when it comes to post processing because it will allow your work to really be unique to you. But just make sure to stick to the tips I've talked about above because you really want to maintain realism. I hope you found these tips useful for achieving photorealism. And if you're an absolute beginner or even just wanting to develop your skill, you can check out my full free courses on YouTube. There's a link in the description. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. So I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.